everyone, and welcome to this week's Editor Sessions, where we discuss what's up and about in the automotive and motorcycle industry. My name is Fort Manahan, Managing Editor of Carmudi Philippines, and today we have our first motorcycle brand that we will be guesting in the show. So let's all welcome Harley Davidson of Manila General Manager, Jay Bautista. Good to have you with us, sir. Yes, good morning, Ford. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Salamat, ta. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, um, our first question would be, how was Harley Davidson of Manila during the lockdown? Well, um, definitely sales were affected since we cannot entertain prospective customers, no? And give the touch and feel experience, nor hear the sound of the Harley Davidson. No? We were all in lockdown, right? So they couldn't come to the showroom and all what they can do is um, see our website, but we can't really make them hear and feel um, Harley Davidson. Customers were ready to buy then, no? And um, during the lockdown, March 16, I think it started, right? March 16. Yes, yes. So until April, well, we missed, you know, um, receiving these customers. And these customers lost their opportunity too. So, well, no one was rather ready with that, uh, uh, what the yeah. pandemic brought us. So, sir, uh, our next question is, are Harley Davidson dealerships resume operations now that the lockdown has been eased? Yes, yes. Uh, immediately we opened when the transition from ECQ to GCQ happened in May 16, right? Mm -hmm. So immediately we opened and we were ready um, as we announced our opening in our social media page, Facebook. Uh, and we had all the protocols in place. So definitely prior to the announcement of our opening in May 16, we were very ready to ensure that both our employees and our customers uh, would be uh, safe. And um, we assured them of uh, sanitized facilities here in uh, the Green Hills and VGC showrooms. Sir, uh, since you've discussed about the uh, that you have safety protocols, sir, can you uh, elaborate on those? What are what are the safety protocols that you uh, laid down for your uh, clients and your own manpower? Well, Harley Davidson of Manila ensured that, uh, of course, during the lockdown we had time. No, um, everybody worked from home, and we came up with management came up with um, safety protocols. No, in compliance to the local government units requirements. And likewise, the regional office provided us no, uh, some standard protocols for the showroom. So when we opened in May 16, we ensured that one, setting up an appointment is uh, a priority. Social distancing is always um, observed. Wearing a mask, washing the hands or sanitizing them and maintaining acceptable levels of customers inside the showroom is strictly observed. These are standard protocols that most showrooms will have to be observing. No? And likewise, in accordance to Ford's uh, uh, local government units requirements no, per city. Mm -hmm. So we were ready. Since digital showrooms has become a norm in the automotive scene, is Harley Davidson keen on opening one too? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but if you do, you would be the first motorcycle uh manufacturer uh, that would be doing such locally uh, if not globally digital showroom well um at present now we have websites and we have different social media platforms no, to for any customer to view the motorcycles available the merchandise that we have the mm -hmm. motor clothes that we have mm -hmm. and safety apparel no? so Basically, uh, the website, the Harley Davidson of Manila website, features all different types of models available. Color specifications are available in the website. No? Uh -huh. So, actually, Harley Davidson showrooms promote the touch and feel experience. No? Yeah. So, if you ask about digital uh, showrooms, Definitely, we already are present no, in our websites. Mm -hmm. uh, we also feature the content of our showrooms, no, of what we have. Mm -hmm. 
but it's really best that we bring our customers into the showroom. Why? Because really Harley Davidson is for everyone to hear the distinct sound. Number two, the, the feel of the motorcycle and um, how the proper motor clothes or riding equipment should be worn. So these are really the key features of our showroom. You have to be there to be excited. You have to be there to see uh, different models. But definitely, Ford, we'll, we'll take a look on how we can expand uh -huh. um, digital showroom to promote um, other forms of transactions. Yeah. Right? So yeah. we'll see, we'll see. We can, we, we, we'll let you know. But definitely, we already have the website to complement all uh, inquiries on this. Yes, sir. So, first, since all that has been discussed, um, let's talk about your product, sir. Are we going to expect new and exciting models for this year? Maybe you can give a heads up to the Harley Davidson fans watching right now. Well, um, definitely the focus at the moment now is um, the availability again of the Street 750 you know, and the Street Rad. Mm -hmm. um, we have a program that uh, is promoting, well, all Harley dealers now in the Philippines are promoting the availability of the Street 750 and the Street Rad. They're really very popular in our streets. You know? mm -hmm. But for the new models, like 2021 models, mm -hmm. definitely we will have a, a launch for next year. Um, we will um, uh, provide you information for it when the um, regional office gives us further details on the launch. But 2021 models definitely will be introduced next year. Sir, are we going to see uh, uh, the launches uh, digitally or are we, are we, expecting, are we expecting it to, to be seen uh, locally? Yep. I mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. the Harley Davidson really promotes the touch and feel experience. So it's best that um, everybody gets to see the actual model. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sure it will be available uh, to be viewed online once they, we get the information when um, the launch will be for next year. So if you're asking me if it will just be a digital launch, then I think both ways it will be. It will be launched digitally and it will also be present in the dealer's showroom floor. Right. So let's just wait for uh, further uh, updates on these new 2021 models that will be introduced next year. Well, the good news, sir, is uh, as you've mentioned, we will be seeing new offerings soon. So, sir, so please yeah. things yeah. up a bit. Uh, do you think motorcycles are a good transportation option in the new normal scenario? <laughs> of course, uh, I'm a rider and I'm sure everybody who rides really find motorcycles as the best option. No? Mm -hmm. Even before the pandemic, remember traffic is really a challenge, especially in Metro Manila, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody um, used the motorcycle regardless of brand or CC. Mm -hmm. as um, the best way to go around traffic and um, uh, be on time, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I believe that safety starts with the discipline of the rider. Yes, it is uh, a better form no, of um, transportation. Especially now in the pandemic, uh, traffic volume is lesser, right? So it's easier for anyone to, to get into their office, to get to the place that they'd like to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that two wheels, motorcycles are really the best way um, to be a, a choice for transportation. But again, I reiterate, the discipline should start from the rider, right? Yes, yes, sir. Well, since you put it that way, sir, we now talk about payment terms for Harley-Davidson offerings. How easy it is to get such gorgeous motorcycle? And what do you think first-time Harley-Davidson buyers should consider? Definitely, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, for remember, uh, the Street 750 and the Street Rod is available and all Philippine dealers are offering uh, these models. No? Uh, these are very affordable models. And of course, payment options for unit reservations, deposits, um, can now be accepted in different uh, payment facilities. No? We can do online banking, we accept that. 
and uh, just show us the deposit slip and the transaction uh, details. But the best part is you have to go to the uh, showroom, right? And, and uh, write out your motorcycle. Mm -hmm. We also have financing. We have partner banks that offer uh, financing for, especially for the bigger models. You know? And um, three years maximum, acceptable. But um, it's best that um, you get in touch with our salesperson mm -hmm. or our sales manager who can provide you further details on um, financing through our partner banks. Okay, sir. I just remembered, sir, that the first family, our President Duterte, is the biggest Harley Davidson follower in the country. Uh, did you guys already had a ride with him? How was it and how was he as a rider? Oh, okay. Well, President Duterte really was a, uh, is really a rider and uh, a motorcycle fan. Mm -hmm. uh, my father and I had the chance to ride with him uh, way back, 10 years back. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, he really loves to ride motorcycles. Regardless, he has a Japanese brand motorcycle. Mm -hmm. He also has Harley Davidsons. But he's really a true rider um, by himself. No? And he goes around Davao City um, using his motorcycle. So he's really an avid fan of uh, riding. Uh, so just a quick jab on current events. Uh, many have been discussing about the Doble Placa Law. And as a rider, okay. I know you have your uh, position on it. So can you give us some insights to this? Do you think this would really deter criminality? Well, um, the RA11235, no, I memorized it already, the Crime Prevention Act. Yes. It has good intentions. No? For it's, um, it's really good to have this, especially enlarging the plate number no? uh, yeah. at the back. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same as the other countries having such um, size of the plate number, correct? Yes, yes. It's good. However, my thoughts are, um, I think it would be more appropriate if um, the government agency discuss this with motorcycle manufacturers, with dominant motorcycle clubs, and the other government agencies also, and the riding public. Why? Because I think if everybody was um, part of this discussion and uh, part of the preparation for the guidelines, um, every, everything will be taken into consideration. Especially what putting a plate number in front of the motorcycle, it's definitely a challenge. You know? It's not easy. So mm -hmm. now they want to put the sticker in front instead of the plates, right? Mm -hmm. So. I would think that, um, yes, the intention of the Doble Placa Law is um, good uh, to prevent um, uh, crime, no? Mm -hmm. But I think the implementation is um, had to be discussed further. It's easy to put it in writing. It's easy to um, prepare guidelines in paper. Mm -hmm. But the implementation and the monitoring and how the compliance will be done right, by everyone or the whole riding public mm -hmm. is the challenge. Mm -hmm. So that's my thought on it. Okay, it's good, but we should have discussed the details further on what is applicable and what's best for all the riding public. Mm, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir, um, for, your, for, your, for that uh, insight. That was very... Uh, uh, educational, so to speak. <laughs> and that wraps up uh, this week's editor sessions. Thank you, Mr. J. Bautista of Harley Davidson. For those who are watching right now, if you have questions or comments, please write it down in the comment section below. Uh, and this has been Fort Manahan, Managing Editor of Carmoody, Philippines, for this week's editor sessions.